Good morning, everyone. We're so glad you're here on this uh, beautiful weekend. What looks to be a nice warm weekend. So we hope that uh, that pans out. Uh, so it's a great time to get out in your garden and take care of some of those things that you might not have gotten done before the holidays. Some pruning and mulching and cleaning up and just some, some fun things in the garden. So today we, uh, we have a great show for you, some great ideas, and we're joined by a great guest. Yeah, I want to welcome Renetta Holt being with us today. Of course, maybe you know Renetta. She's been on the program several times, and Renetta is one of our many talented landscape designers. Uh, so we appreciate having you here today. And what's uh, on the what's on for today? Well, I hope you all brought your hard hats. Got mm. your hard hats with you. Okay. Uh, today no, I didn't bring them. <laughs> no, well, sorry, David. Did uh, you keep one in your car? <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be talking construction today. Uh, we're going to show you some great before and after shots of some jobs that we've done. Uh, we're also going to take you to a construction site to show you from beginning to end how these projects work. And for you do-it-yourselfers at home, we're going to talk a little bit about what it takes to do it yourself and to see whether that's something you want to tackle, which we can certainly help you with, or if you want to give us a shout and have us fix up your garden for you. Oh, great, great topic. So we hope we give you some super ideas and, and you'll get inspired for the, for the winter season. Because this really is a great time to contact the landscape department at Maryfield. Because mm -hmm. uh, there's time to, take, to get the plans done, to dream and, and meet with the designers and, and have a great That's season. That's right. We've got, a, you know, we've got time now. The, the weather's good. There's mm -hmm. no snow on the ground. So we can certainly come out to your property even during the winter months and get you thinking ahead and starting to plan for the spring. Great. Okay, well, before we get started, a couple of quick announcements. We are very excited because next weekend, our free seminars begin. You know, we do this every January, and we do it every fall. So th this is the beginning of our winter and spring seminars. You can stop by and pick up the entire seminar schedule. Uh, but as you can see, we're starting out with three great ones. A gardener's calendar, which, David, you're going to take care of, right, for the first week? Yeah, I'll be doing that at our Merrifield location there mm -hmm. right off Gallus Road. So. That's fun. We're going to look through the whole season, you know, January, February, March, right on down the line. More on uh, garden maintenance and That'll keeping be, things looking good. That's great. That's great. At, at Fair Oaks, we're going to be having the fascinating world of orchids. And Jonathan Cavalier, who used to be with us and is now with the Smithsonian Institution, he's a horticulturist there and an expert on orchids. So he's going to be here uh, at our Fair Oaks location next weekend. And at our Gainesville location, cooking with wine. That's always a very popular one. Uh, so Chef Lillian is going to be be there and if you would just so we make sure we have enough supplies for that seminar if you get a chance go online and just uh, let us know that you're coming uh, not required but just helps us out a little bit so those are our three ones that we're going to begin with lots of other great topics if you go to maryfieldgardencenter.com you'll see the entire schedule uh, or stop by and pick up your the uh, copy of the booklet now I got mine in the mail yesterday so it is definitely the for the people who are on our mailing list um, you should be getting them if you haven't already you should be getting them in the next couple of days so Great, great advantage, you know, great type thing to take advantage of, especially this time of year. Okay, and just a couple of other things. Wanted to mention that our after Christmas sale at Maryfield Garden Center is still going on, but hurry because we're going to be getting a back into a store before too long, into a garden center store before too long. So take advantage of those great savings, 40 to 70 percent on all Christmas items. So take advantage of that. Um, and we got uh, new shipments in our greenhouse. Yeah, it's exciting. We're uh, during Christmas, of course, that mm -hmm. takes up all the space. But now the plants are coming in, the tropical plants. So that's getting a lot of tropical foliage in, lots of color. That's uh, exciting to look at. And we're also getting some of our seeds in for people who maybe get an early start in selecting seeds for growing your own plants. So I, I know spring's a long way off, but we're getting plants in, and all the all the time, every day, there's neat stuff to look oh, at yeah. in the garden center. Well, and it is supposed to be in the 60s this weekend, but we know cold weather has to be. Here. Here at some point so stop in pick up pick up your uh, supplies kill dried firewood snow shovels ice melting products just be prepared because it's going to be here so well that's all the announcements I have shall we get into landscape construction absolutely let's see what you brought for us today all right well we'll start with um, our first picture um, and this is uh, actually in my neighborhood. Um, I had met this customer. She had just moved into the house. She wasn't even finished unpacking yet. And her comment was, I really, really hate the outside of this house. <laughs> the first thing I need to do is I need a new walkway and I need a little bit of landscaping. Um, you know, I've got a lot of expenses, so I don't want to put a ton of money into it right now, but I want to fix up the front of my house. 
but don't worry about the material that you choose because um, I'm going to be changing the whole front. I'm going to be changing the colors and I just really don't like it. So do what you want to do. So we discussed it and we decided that perhaps we would go with Flagstone because mm -hmm. Flagstone is a wonderful product to use that can um, blend very easily with brick or stone or stucco. It's very versatile. So in the next picture, you'll see the after. And uh, I drove up at the end of the day to check on the job and was actually quite excited, as was the customer, in that the flagstone walkway, um, modest as it is, really pulled the whole look of the house Absolutely. together. And she drove up and she said, you've just saved me a ton of money because I don't have to change the outside of my <laughs> house now. So it was a, a very satisfactory um, project and one of the points that I want to make as we look through some of these things is it, it doesn't have to be a huge enormous project to make a big difference. Right. Um, similar is in the next shot um, we have a customer who had just put on a new deck. Uh, she had resurfaced her swimming pool patio and was planning on doing a lot of entertaining. Uh, however, she there was really no access to the backyard and she didn't want people to have to trample through the house to get there. So she also wanted a flagstone walkway and uh, really wanted it uh, pretty much turnkey. She didn't want to wait for grass to grow in. She just wanted it done. So now you can see wow. that we built this beautiful uh, flagstone walkway. Uh, we added uh, some plantings to the left. We sodded the right side. It's just all bright and beautiful. And if you wonder why there are any, aren't any plants to the left of the the uh, walkway, it's because she wanted to put a little vegetable garden in there. Oh, so that great. was her little herb and vegetable area. So it worked out very well. Yeah, it's amazing how really, like I said, these are not huge, total, complete renovations. Just a few little finishing touches make such a big impact. Just a few little finishing touches. And again, the flagstone, we're going to be looking at other uh, products a little bit later on, but it is very versatile. It's a great, great product to use. Looks better. And exactly. And also the functionality of it before, of course, that first home, the walkway was so narrow and skinny, it just not inviting. Right. opens it up and everything so of course it's inviting visually but also from a practical perspective you know a couple people can actually approach the door that's right plus I noticed that you brought it further down the driveway a little bit so you're not that's a good yeah. point so that that uh, the guests don't have to walk all the way up to the walkway make that 90 degree turn up to the front door it's a more welcoming sweeping approach into the house great so. okay well these are just a few ideas and we've got many more so stay tuned and we'll be right back Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for being here today. We're talking about creative landscape construction today. And our guest, Renetta Holt, is over with David at our virtual garden, we like to call it, because they've got some great ideas for you. Well, thank you for joining us. And Renata is showing some great ways that you can use the construction aspects of uh, landscape design to enhance your home. We started out looking at some really neat before and after pictures and showed this dramatic improvement. Like I said, going in, you know, the place was a little bit in disarray. Come back and voila, it's beautiful and welcome. Now, I know it doesn't just happen like that. No, and the reason I want to show this is that um, there is a process from beginning to end with construction. Um, it is uh, great at the end. It's a little bit messy in between. Uh, a lot of customers seem to think that we got a magic wand and that we can come in and just poof and have a beautiful patio appear out of nowhere. But it does take a little bit more than that. So that's what we're going to talk yeah. about now. Right. So we're going to go step by step. And uh, we're here with the before picture. I'll let you tell the story. Okay. Um, this is a customer. In fact, this is the backyard of our first slide, the lady who had was not uh, thrilled with the front of her house. And we gave her the, the little walkway. So we came back several years later and she has got a deck that's very compromised. It's about a 30 year old deck, a little bit hard to see in this picture, but it's, it's old, it's fallen apart and she has a very steep slope at the edge of her property. Uh, so she came to us and she said, I want the same footprint, I want as much area, but I'd like a patio. I'm tired of the deck, so what can you do? Um, in the next picture, 
you can see the other view of her deck and I'm going to step off to the side a little bit here. You can see how it's really pulling away from the house to the point that uh, when I was visiting this this property with our construction manager and I walked out onto that point of the deck, he said, come back, come back, it's, it's moving. So what we decided to do was we were going to have to disassemble the whole deck um, and then build a patio with some seat walls and some nice features. So let's begin our construction process. The first thing we have to do is the demolition phase and this actually took uh, a full day to do. You can see the crew starting to disassemble the, the deck. It takes quite some time to get that apart and you know then we have to haul all of that material off and uh, you know do something with it. So it does take you know again even from the very beginning you have to realize that there is some time involved in getting the site ready for your construction. So now in the next picture uh, we start doing some more demolition. When we had removed the deck, what we didn't see, because the deck was very low to the ground, were these two stoops, one by a sliding glass door and one coming out of the kitchen. And as you can see, the one by the sliding glass door is probably only about four inches thick. It wasn't a big deal to get that jack hammered out and removed. And that's the kind of thing that we expect to find. What surprised us, however, is you see the, the foreman up on the thicker slab that was a very, very thick concrete slab coming out of that door. Which brings me to the point that if you do choose to do these projects yourself, you have to be prepared to find things that you don't expect. First of all, we didn't expect to see that slab so thick. Then what we found after we removed that was that the foundation was constructed in such a way because the house was on a piece of property that sloped very greatly down into the woods that there were concrete buttresses, if you will, that were part of the foundation. And you cannot touch that. So at this point, the project had to stop and we had to talk to the customer because we could not build the patio at the level that we intended. What we had to do was build the whole patio up about a foot to clear that foundation, which was significant in that it did add to the cost, it added to the materials, it added to the time involved with this project. The customer was very gracious and said, that's fine, do what you need to do. But these are things you need to think about if you're planning on doing the project yourself. You need to be prepared. So, that being said, we got rid of all the concrete and now comes the point in the process where we start to prepare the site. We start excavating, we start moving things around, and we start pulling a lot of string lines. Um, my husband's favorite line is, measure twice, cut once. And uh, this is pretty much what we're doing here. A uh, lot of activity going on. Um, and our crews are very, very good. They're very meticulous. It does take some time to get this site prepared. We were doing some significant walls at the edge of the patio, some seat walls, which required a little bit more thought. And I would say that it probably took us a good uh, half a day to go ahead and get this site prepared, just to get to this point. Moving forward, um, <clears throat> I'm going to step aside a little bit so you can see what's going on. Uh, we have several foremen working in several parts of the project at the same time. We have one foreman and you can see him with a level here and he's getting that stoop built. Uh, the stoop again and the step was higher than we had anticipated because of the foundation that we found. And now you can really see it's becoming a construction site. If you look off to the right, you can see a little bit the retaining wall beginning to be prepared and the product being brought in. And in the next picture, now we're really seeing the mess. Um, and what I like to think of is, you know, you have a two, you know, two, three days of mess for a lifetime of enjoyment with your project. So we do have this awkward phase to go through. You can see the slope at the back side of the patio. And you can also see the big concrete paver blocks that we're using in this patio, which is going to be a paver patio as opposed to the flagstone that you saw before. But now things are starting to come together. 
All right, now you can start seeing the nice curved seat walls. You can see the retaining walls coming together. It's starting to get cleaned up. And pretty soon, we go to the next picture. Oh, now we can see what's happening. We've got the stoop almost completed, the seat walls almost completed. We've got uh, the very last thing is the part that everybody waits for with anticipation and they often get quite frustrated. It's like, oh my goodness, when are we gonna see the patio? Well, that's the last, last step. But here you see the pavers being placed in the next picture. We're almost done. We're looking at it from the other angle. It's almost complete at this point. Then the cleanup begins. And in the next photograph, you will see the finished product. We've got the seat walls finished. She's put her, her furniture back. She's got her little wood pile ready to go. They're all ready to have a party, start entertaining. And we can look at it from another angle. And again, the finished product their beautiful paver patio, their seat wall focal point, and it's certainly a dramatic and wonderful change from the deck that they had when we started. Yeah, that's really fabulous for them to be able to watch that go through the whole process. And I think you raised some really important points there that, mm -hmm. you know, finding unexpected obstacles under there, having to adjust along there. Yes. Also, I noticed, like you're talking about, well, this took half a day, this took a day. But we're committing a big crew to that, Correct. really a couple crews, so we're able to get in there and make these jobs happen. You're right, three to four, three to four crews, um, three to four people yeah. in the crew, and this job took several weeks to yeah. complete with with the skilled professional labor yeah, that we exactly. have. Exactly, because I look at it and think, if I even thought about that as a do it myself, that would be that would go on for 18 months. Well, and we all think <laughs> exactly. we can do it at least once, and then we see it happening, and it's like, oh, maybe right, I better exactly. let the experts take care of There's it. There's so much involved in that. Well, fantastic. Fantastic. Well, stick with us. We're going to take a quick little commercial break. When we come back, we're going to look at several other projects of how construction can really turn your landscape into something special. There he is, my little gargoyle. I love that gargoyle. I knew He's I cute. loved that 150-pound statue down <laughs> here know. for a reason. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us this morning. We've been looking at how the construction aspects can yep. really improve your landscape. Because mm -hmm. uh, frequently we're talking about plants, but it's also the patios, the walks, the walls, this whole element of construction that goes mm -hmm. into it. Uh, we went through that last job step by step to try to give people an idea of the complexity that's in there. Yep. Uh, we're going to go back to a little bit more of the before and after, but some of these start to show us where um, problem areas, how you're take, able to take what was a difficult situation and turn it into mm -hmm. something really positive. That's right. Um, I, I love showing these pictures because I have stories about my customers and stories about the jobs. And um, I have to admit that when I first started construction, I was scared to death. I didn't really understand it. I was afraid of it. I thought, oh my gosh, you know, this is so permanent if I make a mistake. And now I love it, love it, almost as much as the plants. Yeah. But don't tell. Um, the first little job I want to talk about was um, a delightful couple. And they had built their own patio 30 years ago. And there were a lot of wonderful memories associated with it. And uh, their children were telling them that they really wa felt that this patio was becoming compromised through the years and that they were worried about their parents tripping and falling and they wanted them to update their patio. But, but the customers were very reluctant to do so because he remembered when they had to cut the roots to put the patio in and there really were a lot of emotions involved in this this project. Well, see, and he did a good job. I mean it's it's you know, starting to slope and settle now, but if it lasted all those years thirty years. I mean, he did a good job. I'd be proud of that and I'd have a hard time letting go of it myself. They did a wonderful job, but it was time for a facelift. But they couldn't quite get to that point. Let me show you another uh, picture of the same job before. You can see how terribly the steps had become compromised. That was the worst part of this uh, project, that um, it was very hard to navigate these steps because now they were uneven, they were, they were settling, um, and I think, we, I believe we have one more. Um, That's definitely a safety hazard at that point. Right, you know, right, it was a safety hazard. hazard. Yes. And also, there was this concrete um, pad right in the middle of the patio which had to be removed. So we all put our heads together and the idea became that we would recycle and repurpose the customer's existing bricks. Um, so what we did was um, we, we took the bricks up and we cleaned them. 
And But then we had a problem because after we removed this concrete pad in the middle, we were in a brick deficit. So what do we do? So I decided to combine their existing brick with some new concrete paving stones. And here you will see a couple pictures of the finished product. Oh, isn't that fabulous? It turned out great. I was very, this is a very, very satisfactory project. Yeah. I mean, because I, I love the brick that's aged and weathered mm -hmm. and has that character, but here, of course, it's been cleaned up, and I mean, it looks as good as new, but still has a bit of that established feeling. That's right. We cleaned it up. The brick was in good shape. We built a nice, sturdy frame, if you will, around the patio with a border of the concrete paving stones. And then, because we were in this brick deficit, we used paving stones in the center to... Um, sort of like create a little carpet effect in the middle. So we added some texture, we added some interest, but we still kept their, yeah. their uh, original That's brick. really fabulous. I want everybody to get a good look at that, so I'm going to step out of the way because, <laughs> again, I just think that is marvelous. You know, it's great being able to reuse the materials, one, because we hate to waste anything, and it just, I guess it keeps the memories of when they were building the patio themselves and it came out just beautifully. Absolutely. They were, they were thrilled with the project. Yeah. So now we'll move on to another one, another story to tell. Uh, this customer um, had found me at Maryfield on a Sunday where I often am found uh, in the retail section, and she had two broken arms. And she said, I fell up the steps in my backyard, uh, these steps that the previous owner had built, and I broke both of my arms, and I am ready for some... Wow. Yeah, it was yeah, bad. Yeah, that's bad news. It's too bad a uh, fall and broken arms is what you're over into doing this. <laughs> I know. But, I mean, I, I can see coming down here this sort of slippery slope. I mean, just not the slope and the steps, but also the water and everything. It, right. It, it, it was bad. She, it, there were a lot of drainage problems, too. So what we did was we, we uh, fixed her drainage, and in the next shot, you'll see the finished product. We built these beautiful, wow. there are actually 13 steps that curved down from her uh, back patio all the way down to her driveway. We corrected the drainage and we gave a nice, safe, sweeping walkway and again, really improved the entrance to her property. Yeah. I mean, that's beautiful, but I just know from this, that's a lot more complex doing something like that than you would realize when you're it coming down the steps got the slope yes. and I know there's a lot of work done with the drainage underneath. And it was my first big construction project. I don't think I slept the whole time through the whole thing. Yeah. Well, um, it, it came together great. And a lot of that is that you have to give credit to our crews. That's I right. Mean, it's one thing to design it, but to have the skills and the experience and go out and build something I can like do this. anything with my pencil, but they've right. got to build it. Exactly. So we'll move on. And uh, this, this patio was something that the customer actually designed himself. He gave us the plan. Uh, he wanted a seat wall, a fire pit, and a view of his little pond there, and we did that for him. But again, this patio was a complete design by the, the customer himself. Um, I'd like to expand upon that in the next picture. Um, and this is very similar. Uh, the customer Let's told me exactly what he wanted. It's the same concept, but he did not care for the seat walls, and so we used boulders instead for seating. And um, I think we've got one more picture in this section, perhaps. And this customer was hilarious. He said, ma'am, he goes, I have three things that I want. I want to grill out 365 days a year. I want to get rid of my grass, and I need a place to put my yeah. trash can. Well, I bet it's a pleasure to work with somebody that knows what they want. He knew exactly what he wanted. Yeah. So what we did, you can see the grill there, the little focal point oh, yeah. grill. We got rid of his grass, but yet we left area for planting so that it would be green and, and flowering bushes and shrubs so it would be attractive. He's got his place to grill out 365 days a mm -hmm. year, and by golly, we expanded his driveway and gave him a place for his trash camp. That's fantastic. I think that's that's the route I hope to go one day. I, I kind of know what I want. I just don't want to invest all the effort and work and everything to build it. So I have to have you out in my place one of these days. Well, we can help you if you want to do it yourself, and we can certainly come do it for you if you just pick up the phone. Excellent. Well, it's time for us to take another break, but please do stay with us because when we come back, we've got more great ideas for your landscape.
Welcome back to all of you. Welcome back to you two back out of the virtual garden. So those were amazing transformations. Thanks. Really it amazing. So it is so much fun to do. I oh, love I'll my bet. job. I'll bet. So well, I was going to mention too, uh, you know, we've got lots of ideas here. Of course, we'll be taking your phone calls in the next couple of segments, but Renette is going to be doing a construction seminar mm -hmm. on February 23rd, right? Yes. At, uh -huh. at, at Maryfield. Mm -hmm. So pick up your, your schedule of this, the entire list of seminar, seminars because there's lots of great ideas. Yeah, and on, in the seminar, um, the difference between that and what I'm showing you today is we go into a lot more detail about materials, the proper materials to choose for the job, mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, what will be the most cost effective, you know, it's just, it's, it's a little bit more detail. Yeah, so. great. Right. Okay, I want to see some more I want to see some more. I do. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's get going then. Um, this is a slope, and uh, this customer is an avid gardener. She loves Maryfield, has been coming to Maryfield for years and years. And um, that backyard had finally, she had just decided she had had enough. She was tired of trying to mow. She was tired of sliding down that hill when she was trying to garden mm -hmm. and really wanted to. Um, and make her backyard a lot more low maintenance and give herself more planting area because she didn't really have a lot of planting area with the slope that she had there. So she requested um, tiered backyard and so we did a uh, uh, design for her and in the next shot you'll see the the crew standing at the bottom of that slope and I love this picture because it really gives a much more accurate uh, portrayal of how bad that slope was. It was very, very difficult to navigate. Well, that's right, because the steps are going up to the deck to the right there, right? The, yes. Wow. Yeah, so, so there, yeah, it was a very a, significant yeah. slope. <clears throat> and so uh, we decided that we would do uh, two very small retaining walls. They were only about 18 inches to two feet high, each one of them. We didn't want to do one big wall at the bottom because we felt it would look too um, too much like a fort. Mm -hmm. So here you see in uh, midway through the process, they do have, uh, the walls are being constructed and you can see that they've excavated. And already you can see that although we have not eliminated the slope, we have reduced the slope or are reducing the slope quite significantly so that both of the tiered areas do have a slight um, slope to them, but not nearly what they had before and we will be backfilling them with topsoil and giving her a lot more planting area. Here you see the finished product. Uh, it's, it's a much more level area. She has two planting areas that she's able to now start you know, filling up with wonderful plants for Maryfield, which mm -hmm. she is doing. <laughs> um, she's much happier. It's much easier for her to get around out there. And she even has a little bit more planting area down at the bottom of that uh, bottom wall. Yeah, I find over and over and over these sites, what was a difficult, almost useless space, mm -hmm. can, I, mean, I know this is a big undertaking, but that turns into really your favorite part of the whole garden. Absolutely, and what I encourage people to do is to do it now. Uh, quite often people have to do something for resale or for, um, you know, their can't get around in their yard anymore and they have to do something, but we feel that, you know, you should do it now and enjoy mm -hmm. it. Oh, Just absolutely. get to it. You don't have to wait till you <coughs> slip and fall or have an accident <laughs> right. or, or let you, somebody in the next owner enjoy it. Right. I know too many of these projects are driven by, you know, unhappy circumstances. We need right. to just start getting out there and enjoying it. <laughs> yeah. um, we're happy to do that for you too. Um, in, the, in the next job that we show, um, we have a very, very shady yard. Again, customer hated, hated, hated the backyard. I can't grow anything, she said, and I dare you to get anything to grow back there. Oh, which I know. I <laughs> like the challenge. I said, well, I'll give it my best shot. Um, another problem they had also was that the way the property was graded, the water came across their property, past the little sliding glass door there, and landed in their neighbor's driveway, which was a little bit problematic, and their neighbor was annoyed because a lot of mud, in the winter, there was no grass, there was a lot of mud and silt that ended up in the neighbor's yard. Mm -hmm. So the request was to do whatever I could do to make something grow, to manage the water, and to give them a place where they wanted to go. So. Next picture, you see what we did. Wow. Yep. 
I love this before oh. and after. We built a very small little patio off of their basement so that they can come out and sit. Um, but almost more importantly than the patio, we built a dry stream bed that came from the high part of the yard and we curved it in front of the patio and out into the woods. We also put some uh, field stone stepping stones in there so it gives them not only a way to move the water from point A to point B, which was out into their wooded area mm -hmm. as opposed to their neighbor's driveway, but give them a nice walking path as well. And something that people don't think about the walls that we built on the upper side of that patio was not accidental. Uh, that was created so that the water would come down, hit that wall, turn the water away from the house, down into the dry stream bed, and out into the woods. Wow, what a difference. What a difference. So warm and inviting there. And um, then my favorite project before and after um, a naval officer traveled a lot. You can see that there's a reoccurring grill theme in my, in my <laughs> jobs. Um, he had nothing but weeds and a mess. Wanted to get rid of the entire yard, no grass, a place to grill, again, reoccurring theme, um, a little bit of planting area. And uh, he said, my maintenance will be with a hose, watering my plants, and a blower blowing <laughs> my patio. And so, we created a really great entertaining area, a really great after shot, gave him some raised beds around the edge, um, a nice wide area where he can put a table and some chairs and a grill. And by the way, he did get a brand new grill. Um, and also, it's nice that again, being deployed and traveling a lot, uh, he does get someone to take care of his plants for him, but he doesn't have to worry about lawn or any kind of maintenance that way. So we really created a very, very low maintenance landscape for him that's quite satisfactory. Wow, these are fantastic. Thanks. Oh, just amazing ideas. Well, we're going to take a quick break. We probably, we figure you probably have some questions. So give us a call, 703-387-1046, and we would love to talk to you in just a couple of minutes. Hi, welcome back. We're taking your phone calls during the last part of the show here, 703-387-1046. If you've got any questions about the landscape jobs, if you've got questions about plants or gardening, we're here to help. So give us a call. Um, guys, our first caller is Marsha, who's calling from Silver Spring. Hi, Marsha. Um, hi. I'm a fan of your show. I really enjoy watching you on Saturday morning. Thank oh, you. Thank you. Um, I had a question about spirea bushes. Um, I've had them for a few years, and it's pretty scraggly. I noticed the other day going into work that they had cut those back to about um, maybe a foot tall, just just kind of decimated the whole bush. Mm. Is that what, how we should handle a spirea? That's a great, that's a great question. Um, I use a lot of spirea in my landscapes and that's one of the things that I talk to people about in the aftercare is that uh, spirea can grow rather quickly. So if you don't prune them back at any time when they're dormant, they can get leggy and a little bit floppy. So. Um, floppy and sloppy. So it is a good idea to go ahead anytime they're dormant when they don't have leaves on them to go ahead and cut them back hard and you can cut them back to about a foot and they'll flush back beautifully in the spring and then they'll have a nice um, more tidy habit for you when they leaf out next year and you can do that every winter if you'd like. Oh that's great. Can I speak in a question about wisteria? Sure. Okay I have one that we planted probably about six years ago and um, it still isn't blooming. Now, I had read somewhere that I, uh, they might, it might take seven years for those to bloom. Does that make sense to y'all? They do take, they can take quite a long time to bloom. I've, I've also witnessed that um, because some customers are disappointed. You know, you don't buy a wisteria for anything typically except for that beautiful fragrant bloom. Mm -hmm. And it is frustrating when they don't bloom. Um, but I don't know, David, are there any tips that she might do to, to promote the bloom on that? Well. I would call that the plant I love to hate uh, because it is uh, frustrating to get the bloom. Yeah. One thing I'll mention is the flower buds, if there are any flower buds, they are already on the plant so you do not want to do a dormant pruning like we just talked out. You can do that with your, um, with your spirea, but on the wisteria, hold off normally. They flower in early April, uh, so don't do any pruning between now and then. Uh, you can try high phosphate fertilizers and then when you get really, really frustrated, I've had some people will do some root pruning to see if that stimulates flowering. 
Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay. Have a great Thanks day. for watching the show. All righty. Bye bye. Take care. Okay. Let's see. Antoinette is calling from Washington D.C. Hi there. How are you? I'm doing blessed. Good. Yes. Uh, what I'm calling about. I have a um, patio, like a, a porch, and then I step down. I'm down to the patio, and I'm having a problem with my porch and my patio. Now I'm in like what you call an old house. The house is over 70 years old. And I'm looking at my porch is shifting, and then my patio stones is like it's like I look like I got branches that's pushing up the bricks from out mm -hmm. of the ground, mm -hmm. and it's kind of hard to get somebody to do the landscaping in this area. And I'm by me watching y'all. Uh, I'm looking at how lovely y'all doing those houses and stuff, and um, and I'm looking at how can I get a good contractor to come and do that. Well, I know a really good contractor, and uh, that would be <laughs> that would be us. Um, we do a lot of work in the Washington D.C. area. That is not a problem. Um, if you you can either go online and fill out a landscape request, or you can call us at any of our locations, and we can fill one out for you. And we can get a designer out there to look at your project, look at your house, and give you some suggestions on how we can help you. And we certainly do go to Washington D.C. quite frequently. Okay, well, I don't I don't have no computer to get. Online, so that's why I'm kind of well, like you, called. You just pick up the phone and give us a call, and we'd love to come out and see what we can do for you. Okay, um, can I get the number to the store? You can. You can call our Maryfield store at 703 560 6222 and tell them that. 6222? 6222, yes. And tell them that you would like to uh, have a request form for landscaping filled out, and they'll do that for you. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Hope All right. to see you. All, All right. right. Take care. Bye bye. All right. Let's see. Celeste is calling from Bowie. Hi, Celeste. Hi. How are you? Super. How about you? I'm fine. I have a very special request. We have been trying to get rid of moles in our yard. We have tried the, the grub control that you sprinkle over the yard, but the moles are ridiculous. And now I notice they're even in the neighbor's yards as well. How do we get well, rid of them? sharing mold? anyway. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably going to go down the street next. You see them in my neighborhood. They started at my house and just went on down the neighborhood. I don't know. Do we have any new super duper mole eradicators? Yes. Well, I was going to say, have you tried the repellents, any of the mole repellents? Um, no, we were told that the best way to get rid of moles was to get rid of the grub. No, in no, the no, yard. no, no, no. No, that, that's. Okay, we got to start this story over. Okay. Um, that's, that's a common misconception. I hear that over and over and over. But the thing is, moles, they eat grubs, but they're also going to eat worms. They're going to eat snails. They're going to find anything that goes uh, on the soil. So even if you kill the grub population off, there's still food left behind for them. So grubs is one problem. Moles is a different problem. Most of our clients, what it ends up with at the end of the day are the repellents. Uh, you, of course, you do have a choice of traps, poisons, or repellents, but the repellents are probably the safest, easiest to use, and they're actually they're quite effective. So you can do this either as a granule or liquid. Uh, the choice is yours. They use castor oil as the active ingredient, but you either spray it or spread it onto your lawn. Then it needs to be watered in thoroughly to get down into the soil. Sometimes I've had people have had required more than one application, but usually the first application works. If not, follow up and do a second and maybe even a third application. But that's been our preferred and most effective route. Where would I purchase these repellents? Uh, we certainly sell them at, at our garden centers, uh, but I think they would also be available, you know, closer to home. Uh, they all basically use castor oil that's out there, so anything that's labeled for moles. You might check the ingredient list to see this castor oil, and that should work for you. There are things like mole med, um, you know, mole away, you know, pretty generic things. Okay, and may I ask one other thing? Now, does this actually kill the moles, or does it just repel them from your yard to your neighbor's yard, and then they come back the following year? 
Um, it question. kind of repels them from your yard to your neighbor's <laughs> yard, and they come back the following year. Well, I think that's what we've been doing for the last 20 years. <laughs> well, you know, kind of work. It's not a permanent solution, mm -hmm. but I tell you, if you, and we don't have time to do it, if you start going down the route of traps and poisons, which is your other option, that just gets a lot more complicated, okay. hazardous, difficult. Um, you know, that's at the other options, but I, most of our clients, after we go through the whole process, end up just, you know, occasionally doing the repellents. You know, it might become a once a year chore for you. Okay, well, thank you very much. Take care. Have a okay. great weekend, Celeste. Okay, bye -bye. We'll be right back with more of your phone calls. Stay tuned. Okay, let's get right back to our callers. Let's see. Uh, from Arlington, we have, La is it Lavana? Lavona. Very good. How are you today? I'm doing great, thank you. Good. What's your question? Well, I have questions about pavers and also composite wood. Uh, we had um, backyard and driveway <clears throat> and a walkway uh, put in about five years ago and with a, a soldier row of um, uh, pavers and then uh, some I inset areas. And I think the products were maybe uh, Belgard and Knitterhouse. <clears throat> and the 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 um, I, my question is about sort of the cleaning and whether they should be sealed. They look they don't look very good right now. The pavers look the the soldier rows look better than the the uh, the larger uh, pieces that were put in. And I want to know about whether they how to clean them. Should they be sealed? And um, then my second question has to do about composite wood. Similar question. It's not looking very good. And, um, you know, it seems to be, you know, showing that mold and have it, had it, <clears throat> um, uh, you know, use the water to, to clean it off, uh, p pressure washer, but it c seems to come right back and have tried a couple of products on it to, to no avail. Any suggestions? Um, yes. Uh, when, with both the composite wood and the, the paver patio that you have, uh, they can be cleaned with... Um, there are products that are created for that with a mild bleach solution. Um, what you don't want to do is power wash the paver patio because what can happen is you will wash the sand out from in between the pavers and you'll start to uh, unseat the pavers because they are set in a subgrade of um, bluestone dust and or sand and you could disrupt that. Um, Unfortunately, with the composite wood, it again is just going to be an upkeep type thing where you're going to have to go ahead and uh, use these products every so often to um, get the mold and mildew off of them. Um, but you can seal the, the patio. There are several sealants out there. Um, but again, I caution you, once you begin using sealants, uh, it's something that you're going to have to do over and over and over again. So I tell my customers, yes, we can seal it for you. Um, and there are several finishes, sort of like paint. There's one that's more of a matte finish. There's one called a color enhancer. One's going to add, make kind of a wet look. Um, and you can use those, and it will revive the look of your pavers for a time. But then it will wear unevenly, and you will have to do it over and over and over again. So yes, you certainly can, but once you begin that, it becomes more of a maintenance ongoing issue for you. What's the best product for just regularly cleaning it then? Um, I, there are several products out there. I can't remember the names of them, but you can get them typically at Home Depot or Lowe's. They're, um, they're created for concrete pavers and for composite wood. They're cleaners and they're, it's a mild bleach solution. Bleach yes, ma'am. Okay. Thanks so much. Go ahead. Hope you have a great weekend. Take care. Okay, let's see. Our next caller is Lauren, who's calling from Bristow. Hi, Lauren. Hi, how are you? Good, good and you? I'm good, thank you. Good. My question is about uh, the stoop that's in the front of my house. It's a builder's grade stoop, but, you know, it's nothing fancy. Um, and it is crumbling at the base near the sidewalk that walks up to it. And there's a little family of bunnies under there. People tell me all the time, you can fill that in. Why don't you just put dirt there or what? But I, no one's come up with any viable uh, recommendations. And I'm hoping you could tell me what I can do in the interim before 
I don't really, I can't really uh, have it replaced right now, so I'm just trying to find out a temporary solution. Well, stoop replacement is very, very complicated. So I would, at, at you know, at all costs, try to, you know, attend to the problem the best you can without removing that stoop. Now, the first thing you do is you wait for the bunnies to move out. Okay. <laughs> so once the bunnies are gone, um, you're, you're, the people that are telling you to fill it with dirt are pretty much correct, but I do this very, very often, much more often than you can imagine. Quite often critters will get under there, but um, what, what we typically do is we can bring in um, 57 gravel, which is that typical gray, about three-quarter inch gravel, oh, and we okay. install that gravel up. We shove it up under the stoop and push it up under there. Uh, we can also use clay to do that, and then quite often get a little piece of chicken wire that we put on the outside before we put the final dirt up against the stoop to keep critters from digging under there again. Oh, and wow. then, then we bring clay up to the stoop and we compact that clay against the stoop because that will hold and then any rain that comes down will, you know, go away from that stoop, away from your house and then you can put topsoil and plant. So we're so, we, I'm so sorry we've totally run thank out of you. time, but thank thanks so, so much for the call. <laughs> Take care. Renata, thank you so much for being here. This was great. My great. pleasure, as hope always. I love it. We have inspired everyone. Hope you'll come by Maryfield Garden Center. Uh, the seminars start next week. And next week, we will be talking about growing houseplants indoors, right? Exactly. So we'll see you then. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah.